Good morning, everybody. Welcome to All Saints for our service of morning prayer today. Uh, My name is Tim Carter. I'm the vicar here at All Saints and at St. Catharines in Eyton. And you're really welcome, whether you're here with us in the building, whether you're joining us online or catching up on, on DVD. It is brilliant to welcome you as we gather to worship God, to hear his word, and to pray together. I know that um, many of you get the notices uh, by email. If you don't, you'd like to, let us know. There are some paper copies at the back for you to pick up. There are a couple of things I just want to highlight. If you are short of something to do almost any day this week, there'll be things happening in and around the parish centre, painting and decorating and gardening and all kinds of exciting things. So if you are into one of those things and you'd like to help with one of those, the details are in here and talk to Fiona, who's here somewhere. There you are, Fiona, over there. She's waving very gently. Good, good, good. Um, We had uh, visitors uh, from Sean and Rachel uh, a couple of weeks ago telling us about their work in Naomi's village just outside Nairobi. If you'd be interested in a trip out to Nairobi to visit Naomi's village and do some work there next summer, then uh, talk to me and we'll get a little group together and, and see what we can do. Final thing to highlight for this morning is the autumn concert. Can you believe it's... Well, I suppose the weather this morning is really telling us it is nearly autumn. Um, It is nearly autumn. Uh, We've got the Hadley Orpheus coming uh, to do a concert here in the middle of September, and Andrew has tickets for you to purchase, if you would like to purchase tickets for that. There's Andrew. Lovely. So, as I said, we're gathering this morning to worship God. So we're just going to take a moment... to breathe, to put aside the things of the morning, the busyness of getting here, and to choose to be aware of God's presence and to be fully present here, not distracted, but open to God's Holy Spirit. If you're comfortable to do so, would you please stand? If you could join in the bits in the darker type. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We join together in our first song of worship this morning.
Father, thank you that you guard our hearts and minds, our very lives, and we can always trust you. Amen. Please do take a seat. So, over the summer, we have been thinking about different stories Jesus told, um, and we've got this great book uh, by Nick Butterworth and Mick Inkpen. Stories Jesus Told does exactly what it says in the tin, and we're going to have another story this morning. Youngsters, if you wanted to come and sit a little bit closer, you could, or you might want to stay where you are. It's entirely up to you. Hoping they're going to be some pictures on the screen. Should we have the first one? There we go. It's just going to come sit down. Yes. You have that book, do you? Ah, see? There you go. Here is a farmer. He has a hundred sheep. He's counting them. One of the sheep is missing. Oh dear! Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Is it in the hen house? No. Is it behind the haystack? No. Is it under the hedge? No. No. It is lost. All day, the farmer looks for his sheep. He scrambles over hills and scrambles over rocks. He crawls through bramble bushes. The thorns scratch him. But he won't give up. He is tired and hungry, his feet ache, but he will not give up. At last, the farmer sees the sheep. It has fallen in the river. The farmer dives into the water, splosh! He rescues the sheep. Hooray! The farmer has found his sheep. Let's all have a party. Jesus says, God is like the farmer. He loves us just like the farmer loves his sheep. And a little bit later, we're going to be thinking about how when we might feel lost, Jesus comes and finds us. So if ever you're feeling lost, You can say to Jesus, would you come and find me? Great little book. If you don't have a copy of your own, but you're youngsters, get one. They're brilliant. Now, normally in our morning worship services, we have a a bit called This Time Tomorrow. And normally what we do in This Time Tomorrow is ask somebody what they're going to be doing this time tomorrow at work. So we can be praying into the week just to 
emphasize that connection that it's not just church isn't just for Sunday mornings, it's for the whole week. Now we have got this time tomorrow today, but it's a little bit different. I hope is Caroline around somewhere? Oh there she is. I didn't see her come in. There we go. Right. Hello. So morning Caroline. Hello Tim. So Caroline, yes. what will you be doing this time tomorrow? Um, I'll be in the car driving to Wensleydale. Wensleydale? Yes. Are you going on holiday? No. Oh. Why well, are you driving to Wensleydale? Why are you driving to Wensleydale, I'm Caroline? Dri I'm driving me and Carol and three of our Pathfinders to Wensleydale for a summer camp. For a summer camp? Ooh, sounds exciting. What kind of sam summer camp? It's a script to I'll union. It's a script to union ventures um, sea pass thing. It's, it's a sea pass one. Is it? You don't sound very sure, Caroline. <laughs> I know where it is. We just have to get there, don't we, Carol? We'll be fine. So what kind of things are you going to be doing? We're going to be um, meeting about... Um, well, there's th we're taking three, and there's about 50. So we're meeting 47 other children and leaders and helpers, and we're going to be hanging out with them, having meetings, doing craft having lots of fun. There's, there's a water afternoon. I'm not really looking forward to that. Oh. No. There's an afternoon where we go into town. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I don't think we get to go shopping, so that's a bit sad. And the meetings and things is going to be Bible teaching and prayer and things like that? Yeah, yeah, it is. I've never been before. I've done a lot of years in camp with other people, and um, I've never been before to this one, but we've been um, on Zoom calls and WhatsApp. We didn't make it to Newcastle upon time for the 10 till 4 meeting one Saturday the training. a few weeks no, ago. Okay. <laughs> so, but we've had lots of Zoom meetings, and we're on an app thing. We're taking loads of really strange um, resources like little water bottles and loo roll, the middle of loo rolls and I haven't taken face paints, I don't know why and I don't know what else we're taking, wellies? Wellies, it's you're not going to need, well, they're not going to need wellies it's are It's Yorkshire no, in it. Oh it'll be fine. I've just checked the weather, it doesn't look like there's going to be a drop of rain from Monday to Friday so that's Excellent. pretty good. Good, so how can we be praying for you and the young people who are going from here and the young people who are gathering from around the country? Well, one of the reasons I'm doing it, I'm going, oh look, Delia's here, she's coming with us, um, is um, because I keep kind of giving our church children these opportunities, because we did it with our kids and our kids got so much out of it. It was hard, hard work as grown-ups, but for the kids they got so much out of it and I knew that their faith grew massively when they went on camp. And um, yeah, just... Uh, I want that for our church children. I think they should have those opportunities. Yeah. And um, I had seven who were interested to start with, and then we dwindled down to three. So um, hopefully we'll go and come back with lots of tales of how amazing it is, and, and it will be something that gets kind of infectious when Brilliant. our kids come. So, yeah, to pray that we have a really good um, time mm. and the kids that we um, take with us... Um, get a new story from God about their lives, maybe see something in, in their lives that God wants them to do or to be or I don't know. Right. Yeah, those kind of whispers. Shall we pray for these guys? Yeah. Father God, thank you so much for all these opportunities that we have uh, for our young people to gather together and to look at your word, to pray together, to have fun together and encounter you. Thank you for the, the adults who've giving up of their time to serve the young people like this. And we pray for all the youngsters who are going, for those who are going from this church, those who are coming from other churches, that they will meet you in a new way, that their faith will deepen, and they will be encouraged in their walk with you. We pray for your blessing, for safety, for travelling, that this will be a really good week that will bear fruit for many years to come in many lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you for all you do with the young people. Thank you, Carol. And please do continue praying for Caroline and Carol and the youngsters through this week as they go on camp together. So, in a minute, youngsters, we have some activities going down in the parish centre for you this morning, which is brilliant. And we're going to, before you go, though, we're going to pray our church family prayer. So, 
There are activities down in the parish centre for the youngsters. If they'd like to go down, the leaders will take them down in a minute. If you could accompany them and sign them in, that's great for our safeguarding, um, and then come back for the rest of the service. If you prefer young people to stay in with your adults, that's absolutely fine as well. So let's have the church family prayer and let's pray this together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for our church family. Please watch over us now in our different groups. Teach us to know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Okay. Youngsters, if you'd like to go down to groups, do head off. JJ's thinking about it. He might just sit on the step. <laughs> I put the reading video in. Yes. As I said this morning, we are exploring the story of the lost sheep. And the reality is that sometimes it's us who choose to wander off. We know what God's calling us to and what God's told us to do, and we wander off from that. The great news is, is that he never stops looking for us. And when we say sorry, he comes and finds us and forgives us. And we have that opportunity now to say sorry for the things we need to say sorry for, for wandering off. I'm going to take a moment just to reflect and think about whatever we might need to bring to God this morning. We confess our sin and the sins of our society in the misuse of God's creation. God, our Father, we're sorry for the times when we've used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer and in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless, and do not care enough for the world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. having received God's forgiveness, we're going to take the opportunity to declare to ourselves, to each other, reminding ourselves of what it is we believe. So if you're comfortable to do so, would you please stand as we affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to have our Bible readings. Uh, the first one is Psalm 23, uh, and we're going to have Angela sent that on video for us, and then Andrew is going to come and read from Luke for us. So we start with Psalm 23. The reading is taken from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. But you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Our Gospel reading is a little bit longer than it, no, it says in the notices, but it is Luke chapter 15 and verses 1 to 10. That's on page 990 of the Pew Bibles, and in the large print Bibles, it's page 1556. Please stand. Here is the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you had a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman had ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Andrew. Please do take a seat. As we gather around the written word and listen to the spoken word, may we meet with the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I wonder what it feels like to be totally lost. 
as I was thinking about these passages, as I was thinking about what I was going to say this morning, I was trying to remember a time when I've been lost. And, and I couldn't. Now, of course, there have been times uh, when I've had difficulty finding the way to the place I was meant to be going to. There are times when I've not been sure exactly where the bit of ground that I'm stood on is on the map that I'm looking at. There have been times when I've driven the wrong way around the M25 to get places. But I couldn't recall a time when I felt that I didn't have a single clue how to get home. And I think that's how I'd know that I was properly lost, if I had no idea how to get home, which way home was, how I was going to get there. If I, if I, I think that if I felt like that, then, then I would know that I was lost. Maybe you have been in that position. Maybe you have known what it feels like to be entirely lost. If not, then perhaps... Perhaps this idea might help you to imagine what it would be like to be lost. How how would you feel if if somebody took you from here in a blacked out, soundproofed car and dropped you in the middle of a wood, in the middle of a night, in a country where you didn't speak the language, where you had no money? If you wandered around that wood until you couldn't walk another step, curled up in a ball at the end of your resources, just knowing in the depth of you that you're not going to see your home again. What would that feel like? What would that sense of being lost feel like? I suspect there would be despair, fear, sorrow. What then if you see a light swaying through the trees? Are you imagining it? You think you hear a voice calling your name, your throat so dry you can't call out, but you feel warm arms cradling you, gentle hands lifting you. You smell the familiar scent of home on the clothes of your finder. The taste of a reviving drink is sweet on your tongue. What then? You have been truly found. Hope, faith, vaulting joy. And and not just joy for you, but joy for the one who's found you. Joy for those who've missed you, those who've been praying that you would be found. Joy and rejoicing, celebration and party. Lost and found. The two stories that we've heard this morning that Andrew read for us from Luke's account of the good news of Jesus' life draw on this contrast between the despair of being lost and the joy of being found. And it seems to me that it's as we dwell on this contrast that we really allow the reality of how different the two are, then we understand more clearly the call of God and our lives. And it seems to me that the reactions of the two characters in these stories tell us something about the contrast. You see, neither of them are indifferent to their loss. It seems to me you can tell a lot by how important, about how important a thing is to somebody but by what they do if they lose it. So, for instance, if I dropped a 50 pence coin out of my pocket on the street and it rolled into the drain... I'd be a bit annoyed. But I I wouldn't even probably try and lift a grating. If my wedding ring fell off and rolled in, I would be down on the road, shoulder deep in the gutter, to get it out again. Our reactions to what we've lost tell us a lot about how much we value it. The shepherd left 99 perfectly good sheep to go and spend time and effort finding the one who was lost. 
Because the shepherd knew that for that sheep, being lost meant death. It meant the possibility of attack from wild animals. It meant not finding safe water or grazing. It meant disease. Being lost leads to death. The woman, well, she went to a lot of effort to find the coin that she'd lost. And that wasn't just a 50 pence piece coin. It was a tenth of her savings. I don't know how much you have in your savings account. If you have a savings account in your pension pot, imagine a tenth of it disappeared. You'd be on the phone to the bank trying to work out where it went, wouldn't you? It was probably part of her dowry, almost like her wedding ring. In that culture, her dowry would have been almost like part of her value as a person. It was extremely valuable to her, and we see that in what she does turns the house upside down. What else do both characters do? They both put a lot of time and effort into finding the thing that's lost, but they also rejoice and invite others to rejoice when they find what they're looking for. You might even think that they went a bit overboard in celebrating, but that's part of Jesus' point. He's exaggerating for effect. The difference between being lost and being found is huge. It's the difference between death and life. A somewhat extreme, perhaps, reactions of the shepherd and of the woman to the losses and the findings make this very clear. The difference between lost and found is extreme. It's the difference between death and life. And it seems to me that the point that Jesus makes at the end of each of these stories is really important. He talks about a joy in heaven, the joy of the angels, in a sense, the joy of God. There is joy in heaven when the lost are found. There's more joy in heaven when the lost are found than over anything else. And if that's true, And if we, as human beings, are created in the image of God, which I believe we are, and if as followers of Jesus we're being made more like God, then surely we will find our greatest joy when the lost are found. In simple terms, what brings God joy will bring us joy. And who would like more joy in their lives? Yeah, I know I would. And in these stories, one of the things that Jesus is showing us how to do is how to experience more joy. By joining in God's mission to find the lost and then to join the party, we will know more joy. Uh, This is my experience. Some of my most joyful memories are the times when I've been involved in someone who was lost, being found, starting to follow Jesus. I love it. There is no better feeling than opening an email from an old friend who has come to faith. There's nothing better than walking with Jesus as he tracks someone down and being there when he lifts them in his arms and brings them home. What could bring us more joy than knowing someone will live forever in the safe keeping of God's love? So, we've got this idea that the difference between being lost and being found is huge, it's critical. And that if we want to bring joy to heaven and to ourselves, we want to join in the task of finding. But, What does that mean practically? What are we actually going to do? Well, as I was thinking about these stories, various things that the shepherd and the woman actually did struck me. It's not complicated, this. The shepherd left where he was and went after the lost sheep. The woman lit a lamp and swept the house. 
So, that's what they did. So what might that suggest about what we could do? I wonder what they might inspire us to. Well, I've got a few suggestions, but that's all they are. They are just suggestions. You might want to spend some time this week reading over the stories, chewing them over and thinking, okay, what might I take? What might the Holy Spirit be suggesting to me about what I might do? So let's start with the shepherd. What did the shepherd do? He left where he was and he went looking. So, what does it mean for us to leave the place where we are and go looking? Might it inspire us to leave a comfortable place? Maybe to move away from the place we live to a new place. Maybe to do things outside this building. To work with people we don't yet know. It might not be a huge trek. It might not be a physical trek. It might be that sense of leaving our comfort zone and stepping outside a little bit. Um, Some of you might have received Nick's uh, mission update email this weekend. If you don't... uh, If you aren't on the mailing list for that and you'd like to, then let him know. I know that he'd love to share what he's been up to with you and get you praying. But over the last few months, Nick and some of the other folk from here and from House of Prayer have been working with some of the refugees living in the White House Hotel. That's a really good example of this kind of work. Going beyond the borders, leaving where you are, going somewhere else to find out what God's up to. The woman lit a lamp to bring light into dark places. Okay, so what does it mean for us to light a lamp? Might it inspire us to speak words of kindness, to go the extra mile, to bring hope when people are in despair, to speak words of truth, when people are tied up in lies and false or negative images of themselves. In our lives, in our workplaces, in our colleges, in our families, what does it mean to light a lamp and shine some light? The woman swept the house. What does it mean for us to sweep the house? Uh, and I'm not really suggesting get the hoover out. Uh, This is a bit of a leap, but it's what came to my mind. Might it inspire us in prayer to get down on our knees, listening for the clink of the coin, listening for the opportunity to reach out a hand to somebody who is lost and draw them in? I wonder who you're praying for who you're praying for to come to faith, who you're praying for to be found. Perhaps you used to pray for someone, but maybe they came to faith and that was great, but you haven't actually found someone else yet to start praying for. Or maybe you were praying for somebody for a long time and nothing seemed to be happening and you became a bit disheartened. But who could you pray for? Who could you be listening out for? As I say, just, just some suggestions that sparked off in my mind as I was thinking about these practical actions that the shepherd and the woman took. You might come up with some others. As I was thinking about all this, I was, uh, I was struck by echoes of the start to stir ideas we have explored earlier in the summer. If you weren't around or you missed any of them, they're still all there on, on the uh, uh, Facebook and YouTube channels, on the recorded services. I don't know about you, but sometimes we, we'll, I'll read a book or I'll uh, get some teaching or I'll have a sermon series and I'll think, oh yeah, that's a really good idea. And then life happens. And it kind of just, those things I thought were a really good idea or I'll have a go at that, they just kind of trickle away from my mind a bit and I never quite seem to end up doing them. 
I wonder if there was something that caught your attention in the middle of all that, that start to stir stuff, that you thought at the time, well, that's a really good idea, I ought to do that. That's an idea about how to stir up a conversation about spiritual things. Again, perhaps a bit outside our comfort zones, that idea of going beyond, but perhaps which could bring light to somebody. Or perhaps somebody who, in the middle of all that, you thought, you know what, I I could be praying for them, because I want to talk to them, but I don't know how to do this, so maybe I'll start praying for God to give me an opportunity to. So maybe, maybe this morning is a bit of a reminder just to revisit some of that stuff, to recommit, perhaps, to something you thought, well, that's a good idea, but never quite got to. wonder if there might be things that the Holy Spirit is prompting us to remember this morning. Two of our core values here at All Saints, uh, loving our neighbours and celebrating. They're even on banners. They must be important if they're on banners. <laughs> loving our neighbours and celebrating. We have these as core values because they are core values for God. We see them so clearly in these stories that we read this morning. We love others enough to go looking for them because Jesus loves us enough to come looking for us. We celebrate because God is a God of celebration. God is the one who throws the parties, who is full of joy when the lost are found. So the question for us is, are we willing to live out these values? To take responsibility for our part in putting them into practice, for loving our neighbours and celebrating when they're found? Will we leave where we are and go looking? Will we light our lamps to shine light? Will we sweep and pray? Amen. I'm going to invite the musicians to come up. If you're comfortable to do so, would you stand with me? have the opportunity to respond now to what God's been saying. I'd like to suggest two areas in which we may want to respond. There may be something that we know the Holy Spirit is put in our hearts to do. Something very concrete and practical from this morning. You have the opportunity to say yes to God today. It may also be that you've come this morning feeling lost, that you're not sure of the way home, and you need to feel the arms of the loving shepherd around you. You have that opportunity now to say that to God, to say, Lord, I'm lost, come and find me. So, Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence among us. We ask you to come and minister to us. Come and find us where we are. Draw us closer to our Father.
No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Thank you for your overwhelming love for us, expressed so beautifully in Jesus. As we celebrate and praise you for that love that you have for us, would you by your Holy Spirit fill us with that love for others? In the same way that you won't let anything get in the way of you finding us, that we won't let anything get in the way of us going to others. Overwhelm us with your love and flow out and through us. Amen. Do take a seat. We're going to continue in prayer as Fiona comes to lead our intercessions. In our prayers today, after I say, Lord, your kingdom come, please respond, your will be done. Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the good shepherd, that each of us is precious to you, that you delight in us. We thank you for the church. We thank you for the growth of the children's groups here at All Saints. We pray that you'll raise up good leaders. We pray your blessing on our children. Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Help the church to love as you love us. Rout out our discord and prejudice. Build your kingdom here. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. We reflect on our psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We pray for those who are in want. Who are worried about money or job or relationships. We pray for those who are getting A-level results this week. Lead them into green pastures. Restore their soul. The psalmist says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. We pray for those in dark places or who feel lost. 
for those who are anxious or depressed, for those who have been bereaved or are lonely or who are poorly. Let them know your comfort and healing. Take away their fear. Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Heavenly Father, we pray for our town and we thank you for the investment in Wellington, for new businesses. But we also pray for those businesses that are struggling and we think of Wilco. Lord, build your kingdom in our town. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord, we remember before you the world's great needs and its unnoticed sorrows. We pray for those who have been the victims of fires, like in Hawaii, for those countries at war, and we continue to pray for peace in Ukraine. We pray for those who have been displaced, living in hotels. Lord, we pray that you might lead them into green pastures, restore their soul. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And we pray for the charity Kip Man in Place, which works to support those who are homeless. We pray that you will bless their work and help them to support people into accommodation that they can call home. Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Amen. And so together we pray the Lord's Prayer, slowly. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Fiona. I have some bands of marriage to read. I published the bands of marriage between Adrian Guy Smith and Amy Patricia Hilditch, both of this parish and with qualifying connections with St Mary Magdalene or Brighton. If anyone knows any reasons why they may not marry, you are to declare it. Let's pray for Adrian and Amy. Father God, thank you for the gift of love and marriage. We pray for Adrian and Amy as they prepare for their wedding day, that this would be a time of joy and celebration for them and the beginning of a lifelong adventure with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Whilst uh, we don't take an offering during services, uh, here at All Saints we are very grateful to everyone who uh, gives financially and in their time and energy to keeping, keeping us able to serve this community. And we're going to mark that by thanking God for his generosity to us and blessing the gifts that have been given. So we're going to join together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. We are coming towards the end of our service here in church this morning. It's been lovely to be with you. Uh, we're going to continue together over tea and coffee down in the parish centre after the service. 
out of here, turn left, turn left. You're more than welcome to join us. If uh, it's your first time with us or you've been coming a little while and you think, yes, you'd like to settle into All Saints and make it your, your home church, please do fill in a welcome card there on the desk just at the back there. Ask one of the sides people, they'll be able to point it out to you. That just enables us to keep in touch with you and let you know what's going on in church life. Now, it's a showery day, and some of you had umbrellas when you arrived, and you put them in the umbrella thing in the porch. It may not be raining when you leave, but we do not need to expand the All Saints umbrella collection. <laughs> so if you bought an umbrella with you, could you please take it away with you? That would be lovely. Um, <laughs> For those of you who are on the Blue Rotor for various, uh, helping out with various aspects of the service, the new Blue Rotor to the next term is available, and that's what's all over the thing at the back there. So if, you could, if you're here, you could pick that up and take it with you. That also would be great. It means we don't have to chase you with them. In a moment, we're going to sing our final hymn, and during that, if those of you who've got youngsters down in the parish centre can go and sign them out, that helps with our safeguarding before the hordes arrive for coffee. That would be lovely. If you're able and comfortable to do so, would you please stand? As you go this week, may you know the joy of the shepherd's arms around you and the joy of seeing others be found. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.